Connecticut's number one local news. This is Channel 3 Eyewitness News. Thanks so much for joining us at 7. I'm Nicole Nalepa. We are on pump patrol this morning with another new record high for gas. The painful prices are showing no signs of slowing down. Right now, according to AAA, the national average for a gallon of regular is $4.95 a gallon. Here in Connecticut, we are just below that at $4.94. Channel 3 Eyewitness News reporter Marcy Jones has a closer look at these insanely high prices. Sanctions on Russian oil and inflation combined with the summer driving season has the price per gallon of gas increasing faster than folks can keep up. This is uncharted territory for us, and unfortunately, experts say things are going to get worse before they get better. My hunch is that by the middle of fall, we would see drop in the oil price. Because by then, I'm optimistic that Saudi Arabia and other OPEC countries would raise their output. By then, the demand will also subside because people will not be traveling as much as they are going to travel in the summer. And that was Marcy Jones reporting. Experts say it's likely we'll see prices in Connecticut reach $6 a gallon this summer. The light at the end of the tunnel, though, seems to be on track for mid-fall which is when prices are expected to take a little bit of a dip. And in the meantime, we are doing what we can to help you save some cash when you fill up. Check out the Pump Patrol on the Channel 3 app. There you'll find a real-time list of the least expensive gas prices around the state. Nicole, the rain is done for this morning. However, more rain is marching into the state for tomorrow morning. So we want you to give uh, a little bit of extra travel time this morning because the roads are damp and tomorrow morning you need to plan accordingly because we're expecting some more showers and even some thunderstorms tomorrow. Tomorrow morning's rain could actually be heavier than this morning's rain. And this morning we picked up three quarters of an inch of rain in parts of the state. Let's take a look at our Doppler, the only live Doppler radar in Connecticut scanning the state dry. There goes the rain pushing out of here. It's still raining in parts of Massachusetts. So if you're heading in that direction, you're going to be getting a little bit wet grab the umbrella but uh, our next batch is rolling through Illinois and that will be here tomorrow morning visibility is down in parts of the state we do have some fog out there to greet us so exercise caution on that front as well but according to futurecast tomorrow's weather today we clear it all out and today is a partly to mostly sunny day and then tomorrow well the clouds certainly increase and we're expecting rain heavy at times tomorrow morning maybe even some lightning and thunder this is 9 a.m. And then that's wrapping up by about noontime tomorrow, and then we should be under partly to mostly sunny skies later in the afternoon. Friday looks amazing, so make some plans to be outside on Friday. All right, there's the wet roads in New Haven. Good morning, 68 degrees. That's a good-looking number. Mostly overcast conditions right now at Bradley, 67. Torrington, we're looking mostly overcast uh, there as well with some wet roads to greet you, but no rain out there. A little bit of a break in the action now in Waterbury. We're starting to see a little bit of a a little bit of a break in the overcast conditions there. Old Saybrook, there goes a mariner out there on a cloudy day, but the sun is going to come out and it's going to be a beautiful afternoon. Look at the rainfall totals, right? Over three quarters of an inch of rain in Plainfield, three quarters of an inch in Woodbridge, four tenths of an inch in Waterbury and the same in New Haven. So uh, pretty impressive. We needed the rain, wash out some of the pollen and uh, get rid of some of the deficits we have for the month of uh, May and June. All right, now the temperatures out there this morning, it is 70 degrees in Danbury. That's remarkable. The dew point is 66 and the dew points are in the mid 60s. So it is a bit muggy out there and we're up anywhere from three to 11 degrees warmer than 24 hours ago with the wind out of the south. The wind will be out of the west today and uh, 10 to 15 miles an hour. It's not going to be as windy as it was yesterday. Here comes the sunshine by 1 p.m. We're under sunny skies and the temperature gets to 80 degrees by 3 p.m. if not a little bit warmer. More of the same for the immediate shoreline. It looks beautiful there as well. We just got to give it a little time to clear out these clouds. There goes the rain. We say bye bye. All right. Temperatures today top out in the upper 70s, low 80s. Showers early have come to an end, partly to mostly sunny today. And then your seven day forecast includes more rain tomorrow morning. It's going to rain heavily with lightning and thunder. Afternoon clearing. Friday looks good. Saturday, we're talking about some showers and rain in the afternoon and evening. Could even be some lightning and thunder. And then Sunday is the better of the two weekend days with a temperature of 76 degrees. All right, 704 is now the time. Nicole, we'll send it back to you. All right, thanks, Scott. In Manchester, a man is under arrest accused of threatening to go on a shooting rampage at Manchester Community College. Police say 27-year-old Darius Burke threatened to kill people and himself back on May 23rd. 
Officers found him at Rockville Hospital, and he is now under a risk protection order to prevent him from having weapons or ammunition. Burke posted bond and has been released with a GPS monitor. Also happening today, survivors and victims' family members of the Uvalde and Buffalo shootings will testify before Congress on gun control. Channel 3's Elise Preston explains the growing national outcry for new gun control legislation. Thank you. Visiting the White House, actor Matthew McConaughey made an impassioned plea for change after a wave of mass shootings and gun violence that shocked the nation. We start by making the loss of these lives matter. Find a middle, middle ground, the place where most of us Americans live anyway. The Uvalde, Texas native spoke of meeting the parents of 10-year-old Alethea Ramirez. She's one of the 19 students killed with two of their teachers in one of the worst school shootings in U.S. history. Now, Alethea, her dream was to go to art school in Paris and one day share her art with the world. On Capitol Hill, the son of 86-year-old Ruth Whitfield, who was killed in last month's supermarket mass shooting in Buffalo, New York, urged lawmakers to take action. Is there nothing that you personally are willing to do to stop the cancer of white supremacy and the domestic terrorism, terrorism it inspires? Senators involved in bipartisan talks appear to be moving toward a package that could include enhanced background checks and incentives for states with red flag laws. Every day we get closer to an agreement, not further away. We're hoping to actually get an outcome that'll make a difference uh, in the areas of uh, mental health, school safety. Later this morning, the House Committee on Oversight and Reform will hear from families and survivors of the Uvalde and Buffalo shootings during hearings examining the gun violence epidemic in the U.S. Elise Preston, CBS News. A federal judge has thrown out the lawsuit to bring back a Christopher Columbus statue in New Haven. An Italian-American group called its 2020 removal discriminatory. The judge said the group hasn't brought forward any facts to back up the allegation. And heading to West Hartford now, where both of the town's high schools have new team names. They were revealed last night after a five-month process. The Hall Titans, we've got to be the Conard Red Wolves. The Board of Ed passed new mascots in a 5-2 to two vote. So the Hall Titans and the Connard Red Wolves were chosen and voted on by students and staff at each high school. We're told the schools have already started phasing out the old imagery and mascots. And the schools will start using the new nicknames for the 22-23 school year. Thank you so much for tuning in to Eyewitness News on this Wednesday morning. Remember, you can get news and weather updates anytime on the Channel 3 app. And keep that app handy, especially with the second batch of wet weather that's coming our way. Have a great day, everyone. Be healthy, stay positive. See you tomorrow.